Hey guys, welcome back to 30 Days of Laravel. Today's day 13, I think. And we are going to talk about the repository pattern and dependency injection. And the reason we are going to talk about this together is because the kind of glue, so uh, you need to use dependency injection to use the repository pattern usually. So we are going to talk about it. And um, if you want to go more in depth on this subject, I have two separate videos, one on dependency injection and one on the repository pattern. They will be linked on the email, so make sure to check them out. So first of all, what is dependency injection? Uh, do you know when you instantiate a object using the new keyword? For instance, if you wanted to get a new model, you would say post equals new model. So this is a hard dependency. What this means is uh, you are creating this in a hard way. So you're creating this inside a method and you have no external access to this. Now, let's say you have this index method right here, right? Um, so you would call it and you would say index and then uh, a new post would be instantiated, right? Dependency injection simply means instead of instantiating this inside um, the method or inside the class, um, you could instead pass that as an argument. So you could, instead of do um, new new post, you could instead expect a post as an argument. And when you call index, you could say new post. Now, why does this matter? Because here you're doing something we call inversion of control. So um, you are passing the argument, you know? It's that um, it's a principle, don't call us, we call you. So you're passing the argument, and this is important in some situations because one of the most important things is that it allows you to properly test stuff. You could pass a mock here. We haven't talked about this yet, but um, in a test, you would be you would have the option to pass a mocked object here instead of a real post and to some assertions. And there are lots of other things. There are a lot of other reasons why this is important. And if you want to, to go into them, I have a separate video on this, but I want to keep this one short. So this is basically, basically version of control. Um, we are we start to pass stuff as an argument instead of instantiating them with the new keyword. Anyway, so this is what we call inversion of control or dependency injection, whatever. Now let's talk about the repository pattern. I'm sure you've, you've heard about it. Um, some people claim that it's the, the most important thing in earth. Um, particularly, I'm not too fond of it. I think it's a little bit useless on a Laravel application. Sure, it might be important on some other applications, but on a Laravel application, I think it's useless. Basically, a repository is a layer that deals with persistence and, uh, I'm sorry, not persistence, but um, deals with getting, fetching, and creating um, objects that relate to the database. So for instance, this is how we usually get some posts, right? This is what we do. We just call post all. On a repository repairing scenario, we would do something like this. Post, um, post repository, um, get all, like this. So we're adding a, an extra layer on, on our calls. And this is good for testing when you want to unit test this, for instance, you have full control over this dependency. We would pass it here as an argument and you would be able to have the ability to, you know, pass something different, pass a mock, for instance. And um, like I said, I don't think it works on an eloquent scenario, on a Laravel scenario, but I'm going to show you guys how you do it anyway. Another reason this could be useful is because some people don't like to keep their models crowded. For, for instance, if we go into the model, uh, in the post model, we have one, two, three, we have three scopes already. And some people, um, we, don't, we don't have any method here that really does a database call, but some people don't like to have fat models, uh, especially with methods that relate to, to database calls and they would rather put this in a post repository. In this case, I agree with it, but it's just, you know, a verbiage thing. It could be called a service or something else. It's not a repository per se, so it's just a way of organizing your application. But anyway, let me show you guys how it is done. So first we got to create a repository. 
So I'm going to create it under app repository, post repository like this. Um, namespace app repositories like this, post repository, and we need to pass in uh, a, a parameter for the, the constructor. So we gotta say protected post. So construct, we are going to expect a post instance. So this post equals post like this. And the get all method would do this, return this post all. So we're really just proxying the call, right? We're not really doing much on the situation. And we would change this for this. And I'm going to explain how each of this works. So this is what we would do. So if we go here and refresh it, uh, post repository does not exist. What? Oh, okay, the namespace was wrong. It was supposed to be repositories. Now let's refresh it. You can see that it works the same, right? But you can see that things are a little bit different. So for instance, we are type hinting this post repository, but where is this coming from? And the same happens here. So we are type hinting this, but where is this post coming from? This is an argument, this is a required argument. And this goes into another subject and that is the container. Laravel comes with something we call a container. And one of its uh, abilities is to figure out dependencies for you. So um, when Laravel call, remember that who's calling the controller is Laravel. When we pass it as an argument to a route method, Laravel is calling the controller and it can figure out that, okay, so it requested a post repository but nothing was given. So Laravel is able to figure that out for you. So he goes and says, okay, let me try and uh, instantiate this class. And once he goes to post repository, it says, okay, now post repository requires a post instance, but nothing was given. So let me try and instantiate this class. And he keeps doing that until it either succeeds or it fails because it wasn't able to instantiate a dependency. So if I go into Tinker, um, you guys can see that if I try to say repositories, um, post repository, it doesn't work. But if I say post repository and I pass in an instance of post, it works. So the Laravel container is doing its magic for us. And I'm sure you've used something similar in the past, even if you didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. And I also have a full lesson on the container. If you want to learn more about the container, make sure to take a look, take a look at the description. And so this is basically how you would do it. So for a show, for the show page, you would instead pass it right here and pass the post ID as an argument, then call a method to fetch it. And another way people do this is instead of passing it as a method parameter, they pass this on the constructor. So the same thing that we did on the repository, we would go and say, post repository, and then construct, post repository, post repository, and say this, post repository equals, post. like, you, you know, all the, the drill. We would get rid of this, and we would say instead this, post repository, like this. And if I refresh it, it works. So this is constructor injection, this is method injection. And you can learn more about this on the documentation as well. So. I personally do not like repositories in the Laravel context, even though they can be great to organize some more complicated methods, some more complicated calls. I think they serve well for the purpose, but not really for, they really don't provide an easy way of testing because ideally you would write a feature test, not a unit test for this. So if you're using them just to proxy your TB calls, I don't think it's worth it. But anyway, that's how we use a repository. So thank you for watching and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.